Do you want to learn how to study the Bible, to hear God speaking to you, to get to know him and his son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit? Or maybe you have been confused in the past. You've, been, you've found it difficult to study the Bible. Well, stay watching. We're going to show you how you can. Last time we were concentrating on verse 11 and understanding the phrase, uh, what the, the, the way of Cain and what it meant. And today what we're going to be doing is we're looking at day three of week two in our study on Jude. And we're going to be doing some cross references on the other people uh, that are mentioned in this verse. So make sure that you've prayed before you have started. We already have. Okay, so we are day three, as Molly said, on page 106 in the book. And uh, I'm just going to read it through and then we're going to do what the book tells us to do. So here we go. So God tells us through Jude that the ungodly men that have crept in no unnoticed mm -hmm. amongst the believers have rushed headlong into the error of Balaam and perished in the rebellion of Korah. And that is in verse 11. Balaam was a prophet for hire who wanted to curse the children of God, but found that he could not curse a people whom God had blessed. Mm. Therefore, he suggested that if Balak wanted God to move against his people, they should get the daughters of Moab to seduce the men of Israel and thereby incur the judgment of God. The whole account is recorded in the Old Testament in Numbers chapter 22, all the way through to Numbers chapter 25, verse 9, and also in Numbers chapter 31, verses 1 to 20. And it then says, if you have the time to read this, you will find it not only interesting, but enlightening and pertinent to our lives. Now, what I suggest you do is um, you can stop the video now and you can go and you can read those chapters by yourself just to um, get a better understanding. But the little summary on page 107 is a very clear summary of those verses. So we're not actually studying um, Balaam other than just these um, sentences that we have got here. But you, what you might like to do, in the same way that we wrote the cross-reference, and remember a cross-reference helps us with our understanding, Scripture interprets Scripture, um, you might want to put on your observation worksheet, uh, your text, or by um, on, in the margin of your Bible, the cross-reference where we find out about Balaam, and it is in Numbers 22, to 25 verse 9 and also 31 1 to 20 and that way you've got recorded in your bible or on um, your sheet the, the cross reference mm. where you can go back and look um, uh, find out more information about Balaam so there we go that's so, it yeah so that's going to give you a really good understanding of what um the error of Balaam was as it relates to Jude by reading those um chapters back in numbers but then it says the rebellion of Korah so this is a different event mm -hmm. is recorded in numbers chapter 16 it says read this chapter examining it in the light of the five w's and an h that's the who what when where why and how types of questions and see what you can learn about Korah's rebellion and then it says list your insights in your notebook so this is if you're not aware of what happened with the rebellion of Korah. Uh, it's a fascinating piece uh, of history uh, in the nation of Israel. And so I'm going to read that through now. And we are going to see what we can learn about this mm -hmm. guy called Korah and his rebellion. So, Numbers chapter 16, here we go. Now, Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took action. And they rose up before Moses, together with some of the sons of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation chosen in the assembly, men of renown. And they assembled together against Moses and Aaron and said to them, you have gone far enough. 
for all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is in their midst. So why do you exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord? So let's ask ourselves some questions here, the five W's and H. And remember, those questions help us to observe the text. So let's interrogate the text. So this is obviously about Korah. And uh, again, if you're somebody who's very detailed, you're going to want to write out a long detailed list uh, about everything you learn about Korah, and that's fine. Others of you are just going to want to get in those key facts about him. Um, but we're going to put the list on the screens in a minute, and you're going to be able to take the information that you want off the screens. But but also, let me just encourage you once again, do your own list first, and then you can compare it with the list that we put up there. Um, so we see that uh, Korah was a son of Levi, and um, he rose up before who? Who did he rise up against, according to verse uh, 1 Moses. and 2? He rose up against before Moses. And together he went with some of the sons of Israel, and there were about how many of them? And the text tells us there were 250 leaders of yeah. the congregation. Mm. They were um, chosen in the assembly. They were men of renown. So Korah, he was a leader, and there were other leaders with him. Mm. And they rose up against the leader, Aaron. And then we also learn in verse 3 that they did what? What did they do? Well, there was an accusation against uh, Moses and Aaron. Mm -hmm. So they assembled together yeah. against Moses and Aaron. So, and they said, you have gone far enough. Mm -hmm. it, it's, as I said, it's an accusation. Uh, and then they simply state, all the congregation are holy, every one of them. The Lord is in their midst. Why do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we can just get those first two um, uh, verses up on the screen or verses one two and three so again if you want to get it down you can stop the video and you can write your list down so let's carry on reading then yeah from so verse that, that's four. the sort of setting now uh, verse four when Moses heard this he fell on his face and he spoke to Korah and all his company saying tomorrow morning the Lord will show who is his mm -hmm. and who is holy and will bring him near to himself even the one whom he will choose, he will bring near to himself. Do this. Take censers for yourselves, mm -hmm. Korah and all your company, and put fire in them. Lay incense upon them in the presence of the Lord tomorrow. And the man whom the Lord chooses shall be the one who is holy. You have gone far enough, you sons of Levi. So, Moses, in a sense, is laying down the gauntlet, isn't he? He is. Now, yeah. one thing, I haven't been marking Korah, and again, there's no reason why you can't. Mm. You've not been told to, mar to mark him, but if you wanted to mark him in your Bibles, of course, go ahead and mark him. It'll make it easier for you to see. But you're right, we, we get a response from Moses here, don't we? And um, what we learn about Korah is that in verse um, 6 and 7, he is told by Moses... To, to take the censers, these are the fire pans, and to um, and accompany those people who are with him and to come into the presence of the Lord. And it says tomorrow, very clear instruction. And then the man mm -hmm. whom the Lord chooses, he's the one. God is going to show who it is that he has mm -hmm. chosen because the accusation was, you know, about as Nigel said back in verse verse three, he was a, they were accusing uh, uh, Moses and Aaron of well, well why is he, why are you the special ones yeah why, yeah. why are you um, yeah. and he's saying all the congregation are holy so we're all holy the Lord is in the midst yeah. you know so why why are you the special ones so mm. Moses is responding by saying come tomorrow get fire in your senses incense and come into the presence of the Lord and the Lord himself is going to choose the one who is holy. Okay, verse 8. Then Moses said to Korah, Hear now, you sons of Levi. Is, is it not enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister to them? And that he has brought you near, Korah, and all your brothers sons of Levi, with you? And are you seeking for the priesthood also? Mm. Therefore, you and all your company 
are gathered together against the Lord. And as for Aaron, who is he that you should grumble against him? Okay, so verse 9, what do we learn about Korah? We learn actually that the Lord had separated, or God, the God of Israel, had separated them from the rest of the congregation of Israel to bring him near to himself God. Yeah. So he'd been separated by God. Um, and we also learn something about why he'd been separated. So look at verse 9 carefully. He'd been separated, and it says here, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord. That's the first reason. And then secondly, to stand before the congregation and minister to them. So Korah um, had been given a really high calling, but that clearly wasn't sufficient for him. And then in verse 10, we see that God has brought him near mm. and his brothers who are with him. And then what do we learn? Um, what's the motive perhaps behind Korah's rising up um, against the rebellion against Moses and Aaron? Look at the end of verse 10. Um, Moses says, are you seeking for the priesthood also? Yeah. In other words, what we're learning about Korah is he wasn't satisfied with where God had placed him. Mm -hmm. He was looking at the priest's uh, who were from the tribe of Levi, like he was, but they came as descendants down from Aaron, and he wanted to do what they were doing. Yeah. He thought that he was able to come into mm. the presence of God mm. himself. Um, but God hadn't chosen him for that purpose. Yeah. God had given him a role. So that's what we learn at the end of verse 10. Okay, so... Um, Get these insights yeah. down on your, on your notepad. Okay, we're going to carry on now in verse 12. Then Moses sent a summons to Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, but they said, we will not come up. Mm. Is it not enough that you have brought us up out of the land flowing with milk and honey to have us die in the wilderness, but that you would also lord it over us? Indeed, have you not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey? So you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor have you given us an inheritance of fields with vineyards. Would you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, in fact, that's the next, the next paragraph. Okay, so, we have a quick chat about that. Yeah, all right. So what we, when we're going paragraph by paragraph, just to break it down for you here. And so back in verse 11, what do we learn about um, Korah? We've learned that they were gathered together with the company against who? It says here, against the Lord. Um, but as for Aaron, who is he that you grumble against him? So we also see that they are grumbling against Aaron. Aaron was the high priest chosen by God. Um, and then we see mm -hmm. that um, those that are with Korah refuse to come up when they're called. Let's Let's move on. Okay, so verse 15. Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, Do not regard their offering. I have not taken a single donkey from them, nor have I done harm to any of you. Moses said to Korah, You and your company be present before the Lord tomorrow, both you and they along with Aaron. Each of you to take his firepan, put incense on it, and each of you to bring his censer before the Lord, 250 firepans, also you and Aaron, shall each bring his firepan. Mm -hmm. So they each took his own censer, put fire on it, and laid incense on it. They stood at the doorway of the tent of meeting with Moses and Aaron. Thus Korah assembled all the congregation against them at the doorway of the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. All right, so we learn quite a lot about um, uh, bringing of the fire pans here. So Moses actually instructs him in verse 16 and says, you and all your company have to be present before the Lord tomorrow. And then they were to go with their fire pan, with incense, this is verse 17, they're to bring their censer before the Lord. So there are 250 plus fire pans. So you can just see that list there that I have made. And um, they were to go to the doorway of the tent of meeting. And so we see in verse 19 that indeed Korah assembled with the congregation uh, at the doorway of the tent of meeting 
and then we see that the glory of the Lord appeared. So you're building up this picture of this rebellion um, and how um, Moses is dealing with it. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Okay, verse 20. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them instantly. But they fell on their faces and said, Oh God, God of the spirit of all flesh, when one man sins, will you be angry with the entire congregation? Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the congregation saying, Get back from around the dwellings of Korah, Dathan and Abiram. Mm -hmm. Moses arose, went down to Dathan and Abiram with the elders of Israel following him. And he spoke to the congregation saying, Depart now from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing that belongs to them or you will be swept away in all their sin. Yeah. So they got back from around the dwellings of Korah, Dathan and Abiram. Dathan and Abiram came out, stood at the doorway of their tents along with their wives, their sons and their little ones. Moses said, by this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these deeds. For this is not my doing. If these men die the death of all men, or if they suffer the fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord brings out an entirely new thing and the ground opens its mouth, and swallows them up with all that is theirs and they descend alive into Sheol then you will understand that these men have spurned the Lord. Now that's quite a passage isn't it so we we see back in um, verse 20 that the Lord actually wanted to consume Korah and the company with them and Moses and, um, and Aaron um, they fell on their faces and they pleaded with the Lord and uh, and then um, the Lord actually said tell them to get back tell them because he was going to do something which we, which we now know about um, and he said get away from the tents of these wicked men and so there's a real challenge to Moses leadership here because look at verse 28 and, and uh, it says this um, by this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these deeds, for this is not my doing. If these men die the death of all men, or if they suffer the fate of all men, in other words, if they die a normal death, mm. okay, um, the Lord has not sent him. But yeah. if the ground opens up its well, mouth... If the and, Lord brings out an entirely yeah, new thing. Yeah. And the ground opens its mouth and swallows mm. them up with all that is theirs, um, and they descend alive into Sheol, this is verse 30, then you will understand that these men have spurned the Lord. And so what we learn about Korah is that they're being described in verse 26, I think it is, as being wicked men, wicked and sinful men. So you want to get that down, uh, you want to note that they're wicked and that they are sinful men. And also in verse 30, that they were spurning the Lord. And if you spurn the Lord, you're rejecting him. So, interesting facts that we learn about them. Okay, so let's move on. Verse 31. As he, that would be Moses, finished speaking all these words, the ground that was under them split open, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and all the men who belonged to Korah mm -hmm. with their possessions. So, in fact, what he was saying in verse 30 has now just come to pass in verses 31 and 32. So this is the new way, isn't it? So this is the new yeah, way. So absolutely. they and all that belonged to them went down alive to Sheol and the earth closed over them. They perished from the midst of the assembly. All Israel who were around them fled at their outcry for they said the earth may swallow us up. Fire also came forth from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering the incense. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So what do we learn about Korah? What are our insights? Well, we've said that he's wicked, he's sinful, he spurned the Lord, and that the earth swallowed up all the men. They went down to Sheol alive. That's verse 32 and 33. 
And then verse 36, we see that fire also came from the Lord and consumed the 250 men offering incense. Yeah. 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 So it's just, we're seeing that God's judgment came upon them. They were rebelling against the Lord. They were spurning the Lord. They were questioning God's choice of who should be the priest. They were saying, look, we're good enough to be priests. Mm. We, we're not happy with what God has given us. Mm. We want more. And uh, God is dealing with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, verse Still 36. a bit more. Verse 36. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Say to Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, that he shall take up the censers out of the midst of the blaze, for they are holy, and you scatter mm. the burning coals abroad. As for the censers of these men who have sinned at the cost of their lives, let them be made into hammered sheets for a plating of the altar, since they did present them before the Lord, and they are holy, and they shall be assigned to the sons of Israel. So Eliezer the priest took the bronze censers, which the men were, who had burnt had offered, and they hammered them out as a plating for the altar, as a reminder to the sons of Israel that no layman who is not of the descendants of Aaron mm -hmm. should come near to burn incense before the Lord, so that he will not become like Korah yeah. and his company, just as the Lord had spoken to him through Moses. Right. So I think, what do we learn about Korah? Verse 38, I think, gives us a clear um, statement, doesn't it? We see that um, the men sinned at the cost of their lives. So these men were sinners uh, because the ground had swallowed them up. They went into Sheol alive. Mm. And as a result of that, uh, and we see in verse 39 and 40, the, um, the instruction is that the senses that they used to um, take the incense into the presence of the Lord, um, those senses, they were beaten out and they were turned into being a plating for the altar as a reminder of their sin. Okay, so verse 41. But on the next day, all the congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Moses and Aaron have a really hard time here. Saying, you are the ones who have caused the death of the Lord's people. It came about, however, when the congregation had assembled against Moses and Aaron, that they turned towards the tent of meeting, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron came to the front of the tent of meeting, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Get away from among this congregation, that I may consume them instantly. Mm. Then they fell on their faces. Moses said to Aaron, Take your censer, put, it, put in it fire from the altar, lay incense on it, then bring it quickly to the congregation, and make atonement for them, for wrath has gone forth from the Lord, the plague has begun. Moses took it, as Aaron had spoken, ran into the midst of the assembly. For behold, the plague had begun among the people. So he put on the incense and made atonement for the people. He took his stand between the dead and the living, so that the plague was checked. But those who died by the plague were 14,700, besides those who had died on account of Korah. Aaron returned to Moses at the doorway of the tent of meeting for the plague had been checked. All right, so the end of let's just go back 16. to actually just verse 40. There's something one wanted to say about verse 40. So the censors were hammered out as this plating for an altar as a reminder not to be like Korah because look at verse 40. Let me just read it. As a reminder to the sons of Israel that no layman who is not of the descendants of Aaron should come near to burn incense before the Lord so that he will not become like Korah and his company. And so we learn that, that Korah is an example of, of how not to be. He's an example of how not to behave. And he's a warning because he wanted to get close to God. He wanted that, ple that um, position of being high priest. And here it says, no layman who is not a descendant of Aaron should come near to burn incense. And that's a really interesting fact that we learn. Yeah. And we also learn that as a result of their leadership, and this is something that 
we learn as a result of their leadership rather than about them. Yeah. In verse 41, we see that all the congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Yeah. And, and so Moses and Aaron were now being blamed for the death of Korah and the 250 men by all the people. Mm. So they had led the people astray. So, so there was a, um, a consequence to their behavior that affected mm. the people. And, um, and so, yeah, we see that because of that. And look carefully again. It's not something we learn specifically about Korah, but what we learn is that a plague came and 14,700 people died, this mm. is verse 49, mm. on account of Korah. Yeah. And that is really, really serious. Yeah. So there's a, a list there. Make sure that you get all those key things down um, about him. But what we need to do now is relate Jude verse 10 back, uh, sorry, Jude, um, we need to go back to Jude verse 10 um, and just see if we can understand why the, uh, the example of, of Cain and Balaam and Korah have been included here. And so in verse 10 it said, these men revile the things which they do not understand and the things which they know by instinct, like unreasoning reasoning animals, by these things they are destroyed. And we have seen three examples of Cain, of Balaam, and now of Korah. Because sin doesn't just affect you, the person. Mm. It affects other people, doesn't it? And so with Cain, his family were affected. With Balaam, the sons of Israel were affected. And in fact, if you read that account very carefully, you'll find that 24,000 people die because of Balaam, the error of Balaam. Yeah. <laughs> and um, with Korah, you've got 17,000, sorry, 14,700 people plus die. Plus the 250. Yeah, so course. there's a l plus the 250 and the yeah. others. So there's a lot of people that yeah. die. And in Jude, uh, you know, it says in verse 11, it says, woe to them. So. So Jude is saying in his letter to those he's writing to, um, these ungodly people who have crept into your love feast, they've crept in unnoticed, they're yeah. leading people astray, woe to them. And then he compares what is going to happen to them to what happened to Cain, what happened to Balaam, uh, and what happened to Korah. So he's... Uh, he's very um, serious about this, about uh, what is going to happen to them, those people amongst their churches, uh, not their churches, but their, their fellowships. So, their and fellowships, also, yeah. they also wanted, he wanted to warn the people, don't get yeah. involved, involved yeah. in them, because remember, in verse 4, they've crept in unnoticed. Yeah. So it's a real warning to them. Um, and so we've we've put some things down we've listed our insights in our notebook but let's stop now let's let's stop and uh, and think okay so how does this apply mm. to me and i think firstly you use this phrase sin is serious yeah sin is serious um we cannot worship god any way that we want to we can only come into his presence in his way mm. and we come by faith into his presence so um the way of Cain was a lack of faith, it was with anger. Mm -hmm. So I need to ask myself, you know, how, how do I do? Do I let my countenance fall? Do I, do I master sin or do I allow it to master me? Mm. And, uh, and the error of Balaam, Balaam worked for pay. So he, he caused those 24,000 people to die through immorality and through the judgment of God. He led people into sin for his own gain. That is absolutely appalling yeah. and so we need to make sure that our motives are right so that when we are doing something we don't get s that's not right that's not godly we don't get other people to mm. come alongside and to join us uh, in that activity to make us feel better mm -hmm. um, and also Cora's rebellion you know sin leads to death so how are you going to what are you going to take away from this what are you mm. going to put down on your um, on your notebook about personal application Whatever it is, don't forget to take it to the Lord, to stop, to talk to him, to open your heart, and to then to put it into practice. Mm. Um, and we just want to say thank you for being diligent students of God's word. These are long passages. These last mm. couple of days have been long passages. But actually by slowing down, 
by marking, by focusing in on um, this person, uh, the cane or, 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 or um, Cora, we've been able to understand something of what God is telling us yeah. from these long passages in Numbers. Yeah. So keep going, stick with it. We're very proud of you. Mm -hmm.